Hey fifth graders, we're getting into lesson 19. Uh, we're going to have a, sh a bit of a shift in lesson 19. Um, we are, oh, Georgie's face buying. We are uh, no longer es just solely estimating or rounding. We're actually going to get into the traditional algorithm of long division and it's going to be great and long and challenging and wonderful. And we're just going to lean into it because we're ready for a challenge um, because that's how we grow. And I need you guys to remember that estimation is such a wonderful tool uh, to bring along with us. As we were multiplying more and more complex numbers, uh, before our mid-module assessment or celebration of learning, we brought that estimation tool with us to make sure that our final product was reasonable and that reasonability test comes from estimation. Um, so please continue to bring that with us. Um, let's, about a, let's have some fun with division, you guys. Let's go. Here in lesson 19. Oh, this is so funny. Today is 11... 19, oops, 19, <laughs> 18 on the eve of Cal's birth. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful day. So as I told you guys, we are using the traditional algorithm for division and you rascals, we are not even having, we're not even being asked to convert our remainders into decimals, which we know how to do that. We are just being allowed to uh, write the remainder as R11 like we did in fourth grade. So um, really what we're focusing on today is getting into this double digit division and then using this awesome check method to make sure that everything matches up. So let's look at 80 divided by 30. And truly, fifth graders, I feel like this first step is the most important. It's setting up your division problem properly. This is 80 inside the division house divided by 30. Make sure that your division expressions and your work is set up properly. We are dividing 80 into 30 equal groups. Make sure this is set up properly. So now we have to think, hmm, how many 30s can I pour into 80? Or 80 divides evenly <coughs> across 30 groups, what do we have in each group? If that's not immediately obvi obvious, here's what we can do in order to figure out um, where we're going to start. I can count by 30s over here on the side, which just means I'm counting by 3s with a 0 hanging off the end. So we have 30, 60, 90. Okay, so 90 will be too much. It looks like we can put one, two groups of 30 into 80 with some left over. And then this um, counting here on the side is actually super helpful because now when I'm multiplying down, we already have this as a tool. So now we're looking at 2 times 30. Well, 1, 2, 30s is 60. Do you see how that's so handy? Okay, now we're looking at 60 minus 80. I'm so sorry, we're looking at 80 minus 60. 0 minus 0 is 0. 8 minus 6 is 2. And here's our step where we have to make sure, hmm, is 20 less than 30? Indeed it is. And look at how lucky we are. All we have to do is just write our remainders as a remainder. We will eventually start bringing down zeros to convert our remainders into decimal, but not in lesson 19, so let's just enjoy it. What we need to do before we move on, you guys, is check ourselves. Here's how we're going to check ourselves. We're going to multiply 30 by 2. 30 times 2, as you guys know, is 60. Now we're going to take 60 and we're going to add our remainder, which is 20. Oh my goodness, I'm a second step ahead. We're going to add our remainder. We had 20 left over, excuse me, nothing to say here. We're going to add 20. Think about 60 plus 20, that is 80. And we're hoping to end up with the same number as beautiful, as we were dividing from. So we are all good to go. That's the perfect check. Let's look at another one, you guys. Um, let's look at this one here. I'm going to change colors. We're looking at 71 divided by 50. Again, crucial step 
is making sure that 71 is inside the house of division. 71 is being divided by 50. Okay, 71 divided by 50, just like you would say this expression, 71 divided by 50. Now we're going to think, hmm, how many 50s can we pop into 71? Hmm, I think this is probably uh, pretty obvious that we can only actually have pull 150 out of 71 with some leftover, of course. Notice how I'm keeping everything aligned. I have one, my one right on top of the 1 in 71. Now we're look, going to look at 1 times 50. Well, 1 times 50, as it turns out, is 50. Next, we're going to look for the difference between 71 and 50. Well, 1 minus 0 is 1. 7 minus 5 is 2. Now we have to stop and think, hmm, is 21 less than 50? Indeed it is. If 21 was not less than 50, then we would know that we could pull another 50 out of this, which would mean our 1 would change to a 2 or something larger than that. So that's why it's really crucial to stop here and make sure whatever our difference is, difference is the answer uh, to a subtraction problem, we need to make sure that our difference is smaller than whatever we were dividing by, okay? And then, you little rascals, we get to just write our remainder this way here in Lesson 19. But we're not finished yet. We're going to do our check step. Check step looks like this. We're going to multiply 50, because that's what we were dividing by, times 1. Our quotient right here is 1. Quotient, remember, is the fancy word for the um, answer to a division problem. So we're going to do 50 times 1, which is, of course, 50. And now we're going to take this 50 and we're going to add our remainder. Our remainder, of course, was 21. And we're going to hope that this number is the same as this number, whatever we were uh, dividing by. I'm sorry, whatever we were dividing. The number 71 inside the house, of course. Great, so we're all good. Let's look at one more here. You guys, again, this is just pretty straightforward long division. Renaming our remainders just as a remainder, and then that check step, of course, is, is a pretty wonderful tool to make sure that we are right on track. Let's look here again at 270 divided by three, please make sure that your 270 is in house, inside the house of division and that we're dividing 270 by 30. So now we're going to look at, hmm, how many 30s fit into 270? Let's go ahead, we started doing some skip counting up here, let's continue this. So we have 30, 60, 90, we have 120, we're again counting by 30s, 150, we have 180, we have 210, we have 240, and we have 270. Oh, that's exciting. So 270 divided by 30, it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 30s that go into 270. So I'm going to put that 9 right above the 0 here, keeping things really well aligned. And that makes a lot of sense because I know that 9 times 3 is 27, or 27 divided by 3 is 9. Of course, we have a different place value here. Now let's look at 9 times 30. Well, 9 times 3 is 27, but that's a 30, so it's actually 270. So our difference between 270 and 270 is zero. We have a remainder of zero. Let's go ahead and do that check step. We're going to multiply 30, whatever we were dividing by. We're going to multiply it by our quotient, which is 9. Quotient, again, is that fancy name for the answer to a division, to a division expression. So we have 30 times 9, which is equal to, well, 3 times 9 is 27, bringing 1, 0 along to the party. We don't have a remainder, so we're not adding anything. We want to look and see, is this number, 270, the same as the number that we were uh, dividing into equal groups? Indeed. Cool. So that check step is really important, you guys. Let's look at a word problem. Here's exactly what's going on in division. Here uh, we are asked this question. How many groups of 60 are in 244? So we're looking at how many groups of 60 are in 
244. So what that means is if 244 was to be divided into 60 equal groups, what would we have in each group? So one way we can do this is we could draw a picture. We can draw 244 individual dots, and then we can group them into even uh, 60 even groups. But we don't have time for that, and we actually have a better way to figure this out. So let's use the traditional algorithm of some long division. We're looking to divide 244 into 60 equal groups. So we need to ask ourselves how many 60s fit into 244 with some left over. Let's do some skip counting here on the side. Let's count by 60s. So we have 60, we have 120. Again, I'm just counting by sixes, friends, um, but we're bringing zeros along with us because it's actually a 60. We have 180, so we have six times one. Uh, I'm sorry, 60 times one times two times three, six times four, 60 times four is 240. Oh. That's going to be helpful. So it looks like we can pull one, two, three, four 60s out of 244 with some leftover. So let's go ahead and make note of that. I'm going to put my six above this four because this is expressing the fact that we can pull six groups of 60 out of 244 with some leftover. Now let's look at six times, oh, I made a goof. It's not six. I bet that was killing some of you guys. That should not be a six. What should that be, Ethan? That should be a four, silly Mrs. Calamaris. Because 60 times four is 240. 60 times four is 240. We know that because six times four is equal to 24. So why is my ink is not working? So 60 times 240 is, I'm sorry, 60 times 4 is 240. Let's look at our difference between 244 and 240, which is going to be 4. So we have 4, remainder 4, which means how many groups of 60 are in 240? Well, we'll have 60, I'm so sorry, we'll have 4 groups, and then we're going to have 4 left over. Interesting. It's really important to understand the wording of these problems and how it connects to the standard algorithm. Um, <coughs> that's going to be it for today, you guys. I uh, am going to let you know the secret word. Secret word is the, what is, I, I guess I'll just do like a phrase. Uh, the secret word is going to be what is our learning target for lesson 19. We're making a huge leap between lesson 18 and lesson 19. Secret word is explaining what the big difference is between um, previous lesson and today's lesson. What are we doing that's so different that we have not been doing lately? I'm giving you some hints if it's not already obvious. We're doing this amazingness. Okay, have a great afternoon you guys. Can't wait to practice uh, some more with you tomorrow.